Hey there everybody, it's Wayne D. Welcome to the web website, it's WayneD.com. And today we're going to be looking at the swing of Lucas Glover. You would figure it that we would take a look here because Lucas has just won a couple of tournaments in a row. He's been striking his ball better than anyone other than uh, Scott Scheffler. But actually, Lucas is number one in proximity for the entire year and proximity to the fairway. So that just means he's he's hitting the ball better than anybody. Now, he has been known to struggle mightily with his putting, but he's got this new long putter, and he's rolling the thing like crazy, making everything. So... As usual in these uh, swing analysis videos, these are just observations of things that are happening. I'm not uh, really making any judgments. You know, sometimes the camera angles aren't perfect, but uh, we've got a. My only face on swing is over here on the left. The camera's moving around a little bit and it's in real slow motion. So just want to kind of look at how Lucas stays in motion if you watch the grip you'll see it loosen up and then he'll squeeze it and when he squeezes it his left hand strengthens into a little more extension and then he's already moving from left to right to trigger the swing so you can see the load happening just as the club begins to move and then the next super interesting thing that a friend of mine apprised me of is keep an eye on keep an eye on the left foot just after the club begins to move the, the toes rise right there now at first I thought it was a trigger but it can't be a trigger because the club is already moving his trigger is this movement to the right I think that the toe lifts up to keep the left hip more back and inward so that it doesn't take him out in front of his left knee and he doesn't get too heavy on the front of that foot so it helps him deepen into that right hip now another real interesting thing with Lucas especially when you look at the overall swing at the top so it's just short so you would think it was flat but that's this isn't flat at all look at the right arm and how high it is above the left so when you think about what that right shoulder is doing when that trunk is moving he's got his chest moving and his whole upper trunk shoulder so think of it as a as a movement from the from the spine and that and that right arm and shoulder are going to wind up and stay high and then at just past P3 he's going to stop the right arm and initiate the forward swing with this movement right here. Now before watching some 3D vids I would have said that that was adduction of the upper right arm uh, supination of the right forearm and external rotation but when the right arm is already positioned in external rotation in the backswing it doesn't really need to add any more in the forward swing so really when the when the arm moves this way it's really just the upper arm moving down and forward which we call adduction now when you see that that shaft kick back say from here to there 
that's going to be due to some twisting of the right arm forearm which is supination now as he heads toward impact he does an amazing job adding left wrist flexion and he's one of the lower shaft plane impact guys that you'll see so we'll st this was a a nice still camera shot the camera guys are using big tripods these days and not holding the cameras on their shoulders so we're getting a lot more swings that are that are nice and stable so you can see every movement really in the start is downward and to the right so you can see the right hip gaining depth the right knee maintaining pretty much a hundred percent of its flex club goes back on plane now if you look at the grip the grip is the way I like it it's an extension here that left wrist is an extension the right is, is is not overly strong but it's fairly strong so when he starts this back and he keeps that right arm way above you know that the left wrist is still an extension right here but right as he gets to the top when he's getting ready to change direction that left wrist will begin to flatten he's just preparing to come forward from P3 and P4 is just about a foot away now look how much he has lowered already in the backswing so if you've watched my videos you know that the lowering process a lot of guys do it all in the downswing or half in the downswing half in the forward swing and sometimes you'll see it all in the backswing so with Lucas it's every bit of it is in the backswing and then it's stable from there so you can see his head's gonna stay right where it was foreheads really nicely out over the ball left hip is still deep and look how look how well the hips are in the box there so as he's hitting it if you watch the the shaft angle I mean that's super shallow but again he leans it forward so much and you can even see with the driver swing that he's gonna hit this ball low look at that he's well past it turning the club down so so when guys when guys tell you that you never want the you never you know all the impact is happening you know back here somewhere it, not true in this case for sure <laughs> because that club is still in front of his left arm way past the ball and if you watch the ball flight that he was achieving they were bullets and mostly draws I'd say 90 percent of his shots were drawing some of them were dead straight and the contact was just so good it was crazy so he was just flushing it and the footwork is so quiet because he's so low when you look at this angle here between the shoulder and the and the waist you know that's that's in Tiger and DJ range right there I don't see too many guys bent like that and when you can bend over that much and rotate that club has way less opportunity to get stuck behind And then you can see how nicely it comes through when I so you look at that line from the shoulder to the waist now watch the right shoulder just meet that spot right there right here that's pretty crazy all right so let's look at a couple of different views of his swing here and a couple of a couple of driver swings
So even with a, uh, he's a, it's a big guy, big shoulders. But look at the size of that swing, and he's getting 170 miles an hour of ball speed, and just flushing it down the fairway. He's hitting these things 300 or more if they're rolling. So that right arm really is being lifted up. Now most players when they get that right arm jammed up like that are not going to be able to recover. But watch this move right here. So that's that side arm throwing motion. And you can see that the rotation is immediately starting in his feet. Now he's going to bend that club in there, open up massively by the time he gets to impact. And it's just a testament to how strong he is, look how quiet his feet are. So you see guys jumping around on their toes. You know, up in the air, feet going all over the place, uh, not Glover. That just looks puree. So this is about, if you ask me, this is about as close to Hogan as you're going to get. Here's another cool shot. So there's the trigger. The trigger is the knees, the little squat, the lean to the right. Now watch the left foot. There go the toes. And again, I'm thinking that that's keeping that left hip back. And when he gets it right here, I mean, that is so wound up. Now I've got to think that there's some, some serious forearm rotation going on in here. Because if he didn't, that club would cross the line like crazy. Now that looks physically pretty demanding. I don't think I couldn't do that for a second. <laughs> That would kill me. But really just flushing it. You know, in tempo-wise, you could really take these swings like I used to do with Hogan and just watch them over and over again. So cool. So I think it was the second round two weeks ago. Now, this is interesting because I filmed this in a tournament. This is 14 years ago. Watch this swing. So it doesn't look like anything has changed very much. I'm sure he has worked on a million things, but so you can see the toe coming up here. Got a little more clarity in this one. Right arm high. Same trigger. That's a maybe a fraction higher, but I wouldn't say it's anything. Same footwork. Beautiful. You, you got to think, now this guy won the U.S. Open, if the, you got to think if he hadn't a struggle with his putting, he might want to be one of the all-time greats. And if he keeps putting great and hitting it like this, he might still be. All right.